Welcome back, guys. So I've been using the Retro Pocket Flip. Shoot, I should probably have it with me. So I've been using my Retro Pocket Flip for about two weeks now, and I have pretty mixed feelings on it. This isn't the worst device I've ever used. It's far from it, actually, but there's a lot of things about it that I have been disappointed with that has made this experience lesser than I expected it to be. It's disappointed me in weird ways, leaving me somewhat unhappy with it. Like there are ways where this could have been improved and pretty obvious ways that I think this could have been improved that I'm not sure why it was so overlooked. So if you've watched my channel before, you probably know that I'm a big fan of clamshell handhelds. That probably stems from the nostalgia I have from playing my 3DS a bunch when I was younger, from playing my older 3DSs, playing the new 3DS, and more recently getting emulation out of the 3DS and using it as kind of like a retro handheld device. And that nostalgia, while great, I think has kind of skewed my opinions on some devices. For example, the Pow Kitty X18S. I know you're probably sick of me talking about this device, but I just need to mention it one more time. I've gone on many rants before about this device, and I don't really want to go into a too long of one here, but I just do want to bring it up because this thing sucks in all the worst ways. The controls stink. Like the D-pad, face button, and joysticks, which are the things that matter, are absolute garbage. These face buttons don't even feel, feel like face buttons. They feel like I'm literally pressing on plastic, which is essentially what I'm doing. And these joysticks stink because they don't click in, which is not really necessary, but it would be nice. And the left joystick, which is the one I use the most and the one I use the most when using it, has like fallen apart. Like I can move the rubber on the joystick and it's very noticeable. And the D-pad is just really bad, so. It really does not feel good to use it. I hate the controls and the out of the box software experience was horrible. There's not much to like about this thing aside from the design. And man, I know I was just like talking bad about this thing for the past like f a minute or so, but boy, do I love this design. I'm not sure what it is, but this shell like with the ra with the rigid edges that kind of come off of the logo. I'm not sure if you can really see it, but the lights kind of reflecting. It just looks really nice, and I actually really do like this color. I know it's not the most satisfying or the most visually pleasing, but it is a nice color. And I just love clamshell handhelds so much. And that's a problem because this device stinks. I hate it so much, and yet I can't help but compliment its design because of the clamshell form factor. Even though I hate the device, I can't help but compliment its form factor just because I love it so much. I love clamshell devices. It also doesn't help that my first dedicated portable emulator was the GPD-XD+, which is a clamshell device. This one actually does have semi-nice controls, and it's not the most powerful device in the world. There are some cons when it comes to power, but this thing was released in 2018. I don't expect it to be the most powerful, and it was pretty good in terms of GameCube performance. The controls, everything about it is just so much better than the Power Kitty X18S. These buttons don't feel that great. The D-pad leaves something to be desired and the joysticks feel like not really that great, but they have dedicated buttons for L3 and R3 and the buttons just feel nicer than the Power Kitty X18S's. So this is a nice device. I loved this thing. I did a video revisiting it about nine months ago and that video didn't do that well, which kind of saddened me because this thing kickstarted my channel into the way that it is today. It, unlike the X18S, is actually nice to use. Everything, like I mentioned, the controls are not that great, but compared to the X18S's, which released three years after this thing, I'd say it's a worthy trade-off. Don't buy it though. I came to the same conclusion in my last in my video about it last year. It's not worth buying right now. I also just dropped it on the floor. Now, why do I bring this up? Why did I just spend a bunch of time talking about two old clamshell handhelds? Well, simply because I think it's important for me to acknowledge my biases, and I think they're useful when talking about other clamshell handhelds that are releasing from these companies. Retroid's take on a clamshell handheld has its pros, but as I mentioned earlier, it falls flat in a lot of places that I find important that drags down the experience exponentially. It really has the opportunity to make or break this experience for me, and it all just comes down to your personal preference if it does for you. Let's just start this out by doing an easy test for these clamshell devices. Let's see how far back they're 
top halves can go and see how far back the hinge can go. I'm including the 3DS XL in this test just because I think it serves as a good comparison to the other clamshell handhelds that these uh, devices are trying to emulate which they essentially are just trying to emulate the 3DS because Nintendo really was the first or at least the first major company to do a clamshell handheld and it's pretty obvious looking at all these devices that they're just trying to mimic a 3DS so let's test those hinges so as you can see both the 3DS XL and the GPD XD plus go back all the way they actually go back a bit farther than 180 degrees leaving a little bit of wiggle room like look at that that is not perfectly flat that is pretty much like it's a little bit farther than 180 degrees it leads me to believe that the uh, gpd xd plus uses a similar hinge to the 3ds or at least a similarly designed one considering it goes back the exact same distance or pretty much the exact same distance maybe just a little less yeah, it's a little less, but it's similarly designed. It's nice because it lets your hand sit comfortably while holding the device, especially for the 3DS because it has a bottom screen. And the GPD XD Plus, it allows for your hands to sit comfortably if you're like sitting upwards and using the device straight forward. What about the X18S and Pocket Flip though? Yeah, neither of them go back all the way. They both stop at the same point, which makes me think that their hinges are similar. Now, this isn't a deal breaker. It was actually one of my lesser issues with the X18S, but it is something that I am kind of annoyed by. It doesn't bother me as much when sitting at a desk or a table because my hands are already angled in the way that using this device would be, would have my hands being angled. But when I'm standing up or when I'm like, sitting at not a table like i am right now it becomes uncomfortable after long periods of time because i'm not able to hold the device up like this and use it i have to hold it i have to hold it like this with my hand angled and it's uncomfortable to see the screen perfectly i have to angle my hands downward which isn't the end of the world but my hands have started to cramp up or hurt after long play sessions which is not desirable <laughs> Hate this thing it's a weird issue that shouldn't even be an issue in the first place why have the 3ds xl and the gpd xd plus figured this out and yet the two devices that came out after it are having this issue it's just annoying it's, again like i said it's not a deal breaker necessarily it's just annoying that complaint aside i am not as big of a fan of these controls as i thought i'd be seeing that the screen on this thing is the exact same as the one on the three plus i thought the controls would be the exact same as well but i was wrong obviously the sliders are different because they're sliders but i assumed that the d-pad and the face buttons and the the triggers would be the same but but i wasn't really correct we'll get to the sliders in due time but for right now man i'm not a big fan of this d-pad i wish they just stuck with the d-pad from the three plus and i understand if like the mold is too big they can't really go with something so close to the shell but man that d-pad feels so good it feels nice because it's clicky and responsive and i thought just because of how different this one feels i thought that this was different like an ex like entirely different from the three pluses but it seems that the d-pad here just has more travel and it feels like it doesn't really click into a button it feels like it just clicks on a rubber membrane which i'm not a big fan of again not the end of the world, but it is kind of annoying because I've expected these high quality D-pads from Retroid, these like Vita-like D-pads, and I didn't get that here. It's not sharp, but it's not like rounded like we've come to expect. I mean, even the RG405M, which I reviewed two weeks ago around this time, has a better D-pad. Like it's not clicky or anything, but it is a nice rounded like indented d-pad it feels really nice to use i wish they went with something like that more so than what they have here which is a which is like a d-pad with flat edges and that's not it's not i'm not really a big fan of that the three and three pluses d-pad was clicky and responsive this one feels rubbery and stiff in comparison don't take this as me being upset with them for changing the design if anything i'm happy with them for changing the design i always like when companies try something new I just wish it was better. It's definitely the best D-pad I've seen in a clamshell device. Definitely over the 3DS's because that one's too small and doesn't really feel that good. But I mean, they shouldn't just settle for better. They should settle for best. And right now, out of every portable device I've used, this is definitely not the best. 
portable emulator, I mean. I hope when they inevitably make the, th the Flip Plus or whatever that upgraded model is gonna be, they make the D-pad better. Just because I want an upgraded D-pad. Like I mentioned, the RG405M has a great D-pad. I'm not sure I'd really want them to go for something like this. I want them to make it clickier, but this one does feel really nice. And I'd want them to kind of emulate at least the look of it because this one feels really nice to use. The face buttons feel exactly the same, which means I really have nothing to complain about in terms of the face buttons. That's a lie, of course I have something to complain about. It's not really a complaint, more so just a suggestion that I want them to do for their next clamshell handheld if they make another anytime soon, or really any device for that matter. Make the face buttons bigger. I hate to keep bringing it up, but the RG405M has these kind of big face buttons for such a small device, and they're bigger than the ones on the Flip and the 3 Plus. And while I don't hate the buttons on the Flip, I do actually really like these buttons because they give a lot of space to my, for my fingers to rest while I'm playing games for long periods of time. It's just a bigger area for my fingers to rest, and I really appreciate that. These buttons aren't bad. Let me make that clear. These buttons aren't bad. They're actually really nice. I wish they stuck with the clicky feel of the buttons like they had on the original Retroid Pocket 3, because these ones feel like I'm pushing down on more like actual like clicky buttons instead of a rubber membrane, but these ones feel really nice and they have a good amount of travel. So don't take this as me trying to hate on the buttons. It's just that I wish they were kind of bigger because they are they don't leave that much surface area for my fingers to rest when playing. They're not uncomfortable and I'd be perfectly fine with them keeping them the way that they are for their next device or whatever. But I feel like it would just be a tad better if they just increased the size a little bit. Just a teensy bit. Not really that much. It doesn't have to be that big. When it comes to the sliders, I don't really have as strong of an opinion on them as other people do. I mean, I'm sure everyone can agree that we would have preferred actual joysticks in here. But for something that's trying to 3D uh, emulate the 3DS in terms of its design, I think they did a pretty good job. Clicking in on them is weird though. I'm not sure how I feel about it two weeks after getting it. Just because that's something I've never experienced before. It's not like bad, but it's just weird because it's not like a normal joystick where pressing in on it is like you can feel the travel distance. This is weird because you, it feels like you're pressing on like a button because of how little travel distance there is. Like I can barely feel the joy the slider move when I'm pressing in on it. It's not bad but I just have very little use for it. Like I know there are probably some Android games and it's probably useful for some emulators, but for right now, I don't really have a use for it. And I mean, I'm glad we have it. I prefer having it to not having it, especially since we didn't have it on the X18S and that worsened their experience a lot just because there weren't any extra buttons like there are on the back here. There were no extra buttons to use as like menu buttons so like if you wanted to use it as like a switch screen button in 3ds games or some kind of like options key or something like that you couldn't but on here you can press down on the the sliders and use these back buttons the m1 and m2 buttons which i think is really nice i think they're a nice inclusion i haven't really used them much but they're a nice inclusion the sliders themselves are fine they do actually remind me of a 3ds slider just a little like smaller i guess like a little not smaller no smaller that's the right word they are kind of smaller i do think they're fine but for how thick this device is they couldn't just put actual joysticks in like this device is like basically the same thickness if not more thick than the palkity x18s and they put actual joysticks in there so they couldn't just put actual joysticks in here again they're not bad i do actually kind of like them but couldn't just use actual joysticks you really had to emulate the 3DS's design that much. Like I said, I'm sure all of us can agree that using actual joysticks would have been better, but for a device trying to emulate the 3DS's family of systems design, like as well as they could, I think they did a pretty good job. I mean, the sliders feel pretty nice. The analog triggers feel nice. The only real use for them I've gotten is from GameCube games and considering GameCube games don't really run that well, I haven't been able to test them all that much, but they feel nice. I did have an issue when I first got it about these de the analog triggers feeling different. Now they feel the exact same, so I guess I just had to use them more. And these shoulder buttons feel nice. They're like nice and clicky, and they're big, so it's easy to use. Like I've said for a lot of features on this device, I definitely prefer having them to not, but when the device can barely play GameCube games and like I'm not really interested in games that use analog triggers that aren't GameCube games, I don't 
really have that much of a use for it. To be honest, I can't really talk about how this device feels to play all that much just because ever since I got it and opened it up, it's been sitting in this grip and has not left. So unless you have the grip, I can't really comment on how it feels to use. The grip makes it all the more comfortable to play. I'm sure you don't need to buy it. You definitely don't need to buy it. If you have like, if you don't have these big hands, you'll be perfectly fine. I just use it because I like having grips on my devices and the grip that they had for the Retro Pocket 3 Plus makes the device feel a lot better and a lot more comfortable to use. And it does the exact same thing here. This thing not having the screen next to the controls makes it a lot easier to use without a grip because it just feels nice. And like, I don't have to worry about uh, my hands hitting the screen or like covering parts of the screen. But I do like the grip just because it makes it more comfortable. You don't need it though. If you don't want it, don't get it. You don't need it. I mean, the rubber material feels nice to hold. So, I mean, not much really to complain about there. Can it stop falling, please? I want to quickly touch on this color because they did a kind of translucent, transparent red. They did have a transparent option for the grip and now I'm realizing I should have gone with that because I feel like it would have matched with the red color a lot better than this black does, but it doesn't look bad. So I'm not really complaining. I'm complaining more about myself right now than I am about this actual device. But I can't help but be a little disappointed by this transparent color because it's not as transparent as I expect. Like the red is definitely overpowering there. And like even on the bottom, on the bottom when you look at it, it just shows the battery. Like most of the bottom is taken up by the battery and on the top, you just see the wiring behind the screen. So I'm not sure what I expected, but I wanted it to look a little cooler. And I don't think I'm alone in that. But I mean, hey, translucent red looks pretty nice. I love watermelon colors. This one's gonna be great for summer, which is coming up very fast. It also makes gaming a lot better in the sunlight because it's easier to see the insides in the sun. Speaking of gaming, I'm sick of this chipset. I've gone in this rent several times and I'm doing it again. You can't stop me. I hate this chipset. I don't actually hate it. I'm just very annoyed that these companies keep using it. This thing uses the same T618 chipset that a lot of devices, including Retroid's own devices, have been using over the past year, year and a half. Two years. Two years? Two years. Close to two years. Year and a half. When did the X18S release? So not including the flip, I own four devices that use the T618 chipset. Two of them are Ambernic devices, one of them is the Retro Pocket 3 Plus, and the other is the Palkity X18S, which released in 2021. So, like late 2021. Stop using this chipset. Especially as someone who reviews these devices, getting all of these devices like right after each other, especially from the same companies using this exact same chipset, is annoying because I want to look for like differences. And the only differences that come from a lot of these devices is the design. I get that it's cheaper to use and I get that they don't want to go too powerful because then it'll be too expensive, but I don't want to review the de a device with the same exact power four times over in the span of like six months. It gets repetitive. And especially when I think of clamshell handhelds, I think of things that can play like 3DS or GameCube and this thing can barely do that. It can barely do 3DS. GameCube, it can do a little better, but even then, it's okay. It plays all the same games that the RG405M does, but the RG405M has a 4x3, 640x480p screen, and the Retro Pocket 3 Plus and, uh, Clam and Flip have a 16x9, 750x1334 screen. And when thinking of a screen like the one that the 3 Plus and the Retro Pocket Flip use, I think more powerful. Because with the RG405M, yes, it is a semi-powerful device, but the low quality screen makes me not care that much about performance. And especially with things like Dolphin for handheld, downscaling the quality is not that big of an issue because the screen is already not that high quality. But when I'm using something like the Retroid Pocket Flip, it is something I think about, especially when I'm not using a widescreen hack on something like Dolphin. And when I am, I'm reminded about how low quality a lot of the games, like how badly a lot of the games run on here. And it's just disappointing. I know I really shouldn't complain about this when so many devices have used this chipset and will continue to use this chipset, but it is annoying because I get burnt out of these devices 
being the exact same over and over and I just have to keep reviewing them and trying to give you differences, tell you if you should buy them or not when they're using the exact same chipset. And it's like, yes, the Retroid developers have pushed the power of these devices to their limits, more so than probably Ambernic has. But that doesn't really change that they're using the same chipset. And sometimes when I think of these low priced handhelds, I think of the Odin Lite, which has been critically acclaimed for its powerful, for its ability to play these powerful games at amazing resolutions. And right now is on Ein's website for $200. It's on sale, but it's $200. And so it makes me think for this thing being close to like what, 170, 160? I wonder what if they just went with that same chipset? Like, would that bring the price up too much? Are they planning to do something like that in the future with a more powerful, more expensive device? I mean, I hope so at least, just because I'm getting sick of this chipset. I want to review something new. I want to review something different, but this thing feels like the Retro Pocket 3 Plus in a slightly worse design. Like, I love clamshell handhelds, like I said, but this, there's so much about this that I just don't like or that are kind of downgrades. And what does it say about this device when I can get Mario Kart Wii running better than I can Mario Kart Double Dash? What is up with these emulators? And even then, Dolphin for handheld doesn't even run the best. I can get Mario Kart Wii running good on Dolphin MMJR, but not Dolphin for handheld. It's weird, I don't understand. It just annoys me because I feel like the company that is actually being really unique right now is Ein, and I'm annoyed with them as well. Because a week from today, when this video goes live, give or take a day, it'll be one year from when the Ein Loki pre-orders opened, and I do not have it in my hands. They initially said Q4 of last year. It is now Q2, and I still ha don't have my Loki Max. I don't know when I'm gonna get it, and I'm very disappointed with them because they did the exact same thing with the Odin. They delayed that thing like three months. They've delayed this thing close to seven, and it's been over, it's been close to a year since they released that thing. And it's like, why is this industry so like crammed with devices, and yet the ones that are actually making these more powerful devices that I wanna be more impressed by, they're taking longer. They're getting their devices out late. They're losing a lot of sales because people don't have trust in their company. I want my Loki Max so badly. I want it so badly. I'm so excited for that thing to get in my hands so I can play with it and use it a bunch like I do my Steam Deck. But this delay has me annoyed. Everything in this industry seems to come with like a list, like a f at least like a few dot points of what's wrong. Like the Retro Pocket Flip is nice. It uses a good design it's a nice clamshell handheld but the screen doesn't go back all the way it only goes back whatever this is 140 degrees not sure the translucent design isn't that transparent it's not that good power is the exact same as the device they released like six months ago it it gets annoying i don't mean to go on like a rant about hating all these companies because i truly don't i love all of these companies and the products they make it's just that i don't know who's gonna buy these things like i get they don't make money in the same way that these major game publishing companies do because they don't make money on software that people buy or play on these consoles on these handhelds they make it on hardware sales so to keep their profits up or they keep their money up like their sales they need to release new products but flooding the market with these devices using the exact same chipset it's not even a new issue, but it's one that continues and I want one I want to stop. Sure, it gives me content, but they're using the exact same chip. And I'm not sure you guys want to hear me rant about a device and how I'm sick of a chipset for the fourth time in like two months. When a review boils down to, sure, this device is nice, but it's the exact same internals as the device they released less than six months ago, that doesn't really leave for an enticing review or an enticing product for someone to buy. It gets a little overdone. This is essentially just the three plus in a different shell and I can't be the only one who's disappointed by that. Okay, rant over. I do actually like this thing quite a bit. I hate that I'm even saying that because it sounds so like weird, but yes, I do actually enjoy this thing. I know I just complained about this thing and these companies for like, a long time but i'm a sucker for clamshell handhelds <laughs> i'm sorry i just have a bias you heard it in the beginning of the video so not sure what you really want me to do that's your fault for listening i'm a sucker for clamshell handhelds and this is no different do i wish the hinge went farther back 
Yes. Do I wish that the D-pad felt nicer? Yes. Do I wish that the joysticks, or the sliders, were actual joysticks? Yes. Do I wish that this thing could play GameCube and 3DS games like I'd think most people would want to play on this thing? Yes. Does it? No. And I kind of have to live with that. I have to live with it because I bought this thing and I'm reviewing it right now. You have to make the decision of whether or not you want to buy it. All of those complaints I just complained about and like ranted about are valid. And if any of those are deal breakers to you, don't buy it. But I wouldn't call this a bad device. If you already have a 3 Plus or something that's similarly powered or even more powerful, I would not recommend this. You have to really love clamshell handhelds to get this if you already have one of those devices. If you play mostly N64 games or low powered games, the most I'd recommend to you is the RG405M just because I feel like that would be perfect for N64 games, just because it's a perfect design, it's a square design, and it feels really nice to use. I would also probably recommend the RG35XX from Ambernick just because it's a nice low powered device. It really depends on what you wanna play though. I definitely wouldn't recommend it to anyone with a Retro Pocket 3 Plus or a three even for that matter, you have to really want the power bump, but I wouldn't recommend it to you if you have a like even a low power device. Other devices have their target demographic, but I'm not really sure who is this target demographic is. Maybe just people that really like clamshell handhelds, but even them have other choices to make that are more powerful through like the GPD Win Max or uh, devices that are more powerful. But what do you guys think? I like it, but if it wasn't for this channel, I definitely would not have bought it. I definitely would not have needed it, especially because of the three plus and it's power, like not power difference. There's no difference in power. Will you guys buy it? Have you bought it? Is there anything I didn't mention that you want to hear my opinions on? Is there anything you think about this? Let me know in the comments down below and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.